So what are some of the um, unique challenges that a cross-cultural worker might face once they're in the cross-cultural context? Um, so we're just going to talk about those for a little bit. So again, managing expectations. Um, we mentioned that before um, in preparing to go, but um, that can be an ongoing thing that needs to be helped and managed for a cross-cultural worker. So invariably, those that goes overseas, go overseas on mission um, to do church planting are pioneers at heart. You know, they're willing to take risks, they want to see the nations reached, they're going because they felt that deep sense of call, um, they carry big dreams and visions in their hearts and longings which have been there for, for a long time. And so um, one of the things that um, they'll need to think through or work through is balancing their faith with realism. And so the reality is in um, cross-cultural work, it's more of a marathon than a sprint. Yes, you get those amazing times where you have a great conversation and somebody comes to faith and it's quite dramatic. Um, but for, for most of the time, it's more of a slow walk with people. And so balancing those passions and those longings and those desires in God with the reality of um, the day-to-day -day walking through stuff with people. Um, so people will have, there's potential for people to feel disappointment when they don't get saved, when people don't get saved as quickly as they'd like. Um, and so it's important um, that we can learn together to celebrate um, and rejoice in the everyday victories, whether that's you manage to have a conversation in Arabic um, for the first time with someone, um, recognising that as significant progress, whether that's you prayed with someone for the first time in Arabic, whether that's you invited um, some neighbours round for tea and it was successful and you had a really lovely time together. You know, all of those things are things to rejoice in and to celebrate together. Um, so I remember, you know, there were times when it would be easy to feel like you were failing because you hadn't seen anyone saved yet or um, you were failing because you weren't able to disciple someone in Arabic yet. Um, but actually recognising that the steps and the growth that you're seeing in the work that you're doing um, is, is significant and by being there and being a light and praying, um, that is hugely important. And obviously we're wanting to pray in faith for the bigger things, but God is still at work. And so encouraging and managing expectations is, is really helpful to learn. Um, another challenge is feeling isolated and alone. Um, that's, that's a huge challenge that cross-cultural workers face. Um, you know, they may have gone and they're in a small church planting team or, you know, even just being in a culture that is not your own, um, where you, you're aware of your differences, you're aware you're a foreigner, um, can be quite isolating and quite lonely, especially if you've come from a bigger church context, you might feel those things more. So grieving the loss of family and friendships back home as well is going to make you feel lonely. Um, so being aware that even though you're doing something, they're doing something really exciting, actually what they're involved in can be quite isolating um, as the days and years go by. So how can you help with that? Show an interest in their world, visit them once a year. Um, when you do visit, have a pastoral visit and when you do go and see them in their country, take an interest in their friends, what they do day to day, um, celebrate those small victories together and when you go back home, report back home, show photos, um, share stories, get people praying um, and let the people know who are overseas that you, you've shared that back with the church because that makes them feel like they're part of something bigger and that they're being supported. Um, you can encourage people to send WhatsApp messages regularly, of course, setting up prayer chains, um, setting up dates in the diary, to talk on a pastoral level. All these things will help with loneliness. Um, also another thing just to mention is that um, it's okay to encourage 
the folk who are overseas in the cross-cultural context to spend time with people that do them good where they are. Because when you're working cross-culturally, you spend so much of your time thinking about how you can reach out to locals, how you can church plant effectively, talking about strategies for church planting, talking about cross-cultural work, or talking about contextualization. And you can forget to have fun and you can forget to spend time with people that, that do you good, that give you life. Um, and so that's okay. If that's with expat families that are out there, enjoy that, get life from that, because it's all gonna sustain you for the longer haul. Um, another point, home visits. So um, most workers cross-culturally will come home um, during the summer for a couple of weeks to a few months just to have a break, to spend time with family and friends, to spend time with their home church and those that are financially supporting them. Um, but it can be such a strange time to come home as a cross-cultural worker because you've left your home, you're coming back for an extended visit, um, you're living with other people, family for extended periods of time, which can be challenging if you're a family with small children. Um, and even for you, you know, you can experience reverse culture shock. You've left everything that you've come to know as normal and you're, you're coming back into your um, original culture, which um, can present many challenges for you. And so just being aware of that and, and helping people to be aware of that as normal. Um, they may feel that others have moved on in the church um, and that things in their home church have changed. Um, you could feel that people don't understand your new context or um, it's hard to keep having conversations about the same thing over and over. And so what, what can you do to help them in that? You can help them to share with the church about their new context so that they're sharing with a large group of people at the same time. And so that others really understand some of what these folk are um, going through, um, what some of their joys are, what some of the highs and lows are. Um, during the home visit, um, you, you can encourage them to take a family holiday, make sure that they get some rest, that it's not all just about work or ministry. Um, another thing that we found really helpful was our home church getting people to practically help us when we came back, whether that's thinking about, do you need to borrow a car while you're here for two months? Where are you going to stay? Do you need, if you've got children, do you need toys? that you can borrow for the two months that you're here so you don't have to pack all that and bring it home with you. Lots of different practical things like that can really help with that weird transition feeling that um, cross-cultural workers feel when they come home for the summer. Um, also, their children coming back, um, if they have kids when they come back for a couple of months um, over the summer, you know, their children have changed too. They look British, but they may not feel British or be British culturally, and so they may act differently to the kids around them back home, and you'll see changes in them. So just, you know, being aware of that and teaching into that in, in your church environment. Um, finances. Um, there's lots of challenges as a cross-cultural worker with finances. You're in another culture that maybe doesn't plan or prepare ahead as much as the culture you've come from. So um, lots of reviews over finances. So it can be hard for a cross-cultural worker who's supported fam financially from back home um, because their situation can change regularly. Um, so maybe, you know, maybe their landlord in their country has just put up their rent unexpectedly. Maybe school fees have gone up unexpectedly. Maybe, um, you know, their car's broken down unexpectedly and it's, it's really expensive to buy a new car in the Middle East. Um, so just having regular reviews and being aware of finances. Another area that's unique, I think, is um, the whole area of spiritual warfare. Um, it seems to be that for workers in a cross-cultural context, that the spiritual battle Maybe it's different, maybe more. it's more intense, I don't know, but um, it seems that there's a greater reality for those who are pioneering in unreached nations, um, a greater reality of sickness, stress, um, 
pressure. Um, and so being aware of the spiritual battle that they're in or, or the spiritual battle that they might be facing in their context and standing with them in that in prayer. Um, obviously language is a huge thing. The first couple of years when they go to, um, when they go overseas and they're in learning new language, um, it's so emotional. You feel like a baby. Um, you can't say um, the simplest of things. You can't order a drink. You can't ask for directions. You can't have a simple conversation with your school teacher, uh, your kid's school teacher. You, you know, just the simplest of things you can't say. And so you feel like a baby, which is really, really humbling. Um, let alone being able to disciple someone. Um, so a way you can really help them is to talk about that, process that, um, help them to be accountable for their language learning, um, but being gracious and celebrating small victories. You know, I got in a taxi today and I was able to tell the taxi driver to stop rather than pass my house or whatever it might be. Um, a change of culture, you know, it's huge going cross-culturally in terms of how you have to adapt to a new culture. Um, you'll be living with daily cultural challenges every day um, from the minute you step out of your house. Um, and that's particularly in the first couple of years as well. That's exhausting, it's tiring, everything can take longer. Um, you might go and try and get a visa and have to go to a million different desks before anything gets done and then you're not even understood or you're misunderstood because your Arabic isn't good enough. All of those things can really add pressure and frustration. Um, so being aware of that and standing with people in that and letting them talk that through. Um, dying to self, becoming like the culture that you're in. Um, definitely that's a big area. Um, you're like Paul, you're becoming like the people you're reaching so that some may be saved. But that's a huge challenge. Um, you, there's a lot of sacrifice in dying to yourself and the way that you would do things. Lots of branches in you are getting cut off and it's painful. Um, you'll feel like you're being humbled daily sometimes. Um, and the sacrifice that you've made to go will sometimes feel really acutely aware. Also, letting go of having to lead things yourself. Obviously, when we're going cross-culturally, we're wanting to uh, start indigenous churches that are led by locals, that are shaped by locals. Um, and our role as cross-cultural workers is really like, it's, it's been described as like scaffolding. We're kind of there serving the building of the church um, in that new context. Um, but we're also, there's a temporary nature to our role uh, we're supporting the locals who get saved to then shape and uh, to lead their churches in the way that is culturally relevant for them and we're walking alongside serving. Um, understanding that reality uh, for the cross-cultural worker and reminding them of that is really really useful but there's a lot of dying to self in that especially if you've come from a context where you're leading um, it, it, it looks very different and so um, there can be, you know, there's just a lot of dying to self that goes on and humbling in that process. Um, if you're single, obviously there's challenges going as a single person, um, particularly for single ladies, um, you may, it going into a sort of more male dominated society, um, that's a challenge you'll be asked, you know, why aren't you married yet? Or people will be trying to um, match you up with their son or their daughter. And, and that's a challenge, you know, to have that always before you. Um, so, f so being aware of the challenges for single folk in, in going overseas. So um, there's lots more that I could say. Um, that's just an introduction really to some of the cross-cultural challenges that folk will face. Um, and I think if, if we're willing to learn together um, and recognise you know, the beauty of functioning in team and recognising that there's others that have gone before you as sending churches that you can learn from and talk to, then we'll do a great job in supporting the people that we send.